Welcome to Sanibel and Captiva's original podcast, The Insider's Guide to the Islands. My name is Nick Adams from Nick Adams Photography. I will be chatting with island experts from fishing guides to shellers to local personalities. I aim to get the insider information to make your island experience incredible. <laughs> okay, hi everyone. Today we're interviewing Wendy Schnapp from Tarpon Bay Explorers, the general manager and part owner. How are you doing, Wendy? Good. How are you, Nick? Good, good, good. Uh, can you tell everybody a little bit about your backstory? How did you end up sure. on Sanibel? And so I moved to Sanibel a little over 15 years ago, and I actually moved here to start Tarpon Bay Explorers. Uh, it's a federal contract with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. So I had been, I'm from Chicagoland originally, and I had moved down to Sarasota, which is about two hours north of here, uh, 17 years ago and started working for a company at the aquarium up there that does boat and kayak tours, same type of thing. And then the concession at Ding Darling came up for bid. So my boss at the time came to me and said, Wendy, uh, let's write the proposal. Let's win this contract and you can move there and go run it. So we did. And so I moved here. It was December of 2002 and we started the company and everything's been rolling since then. So it's been a little over 15 years. And a few years into running the company, my business partners now, who were my bosses at the time, decided that they didn't ever want me to leave. So we call it the golden handcuffs. And so they offered me ownership. And so now I'm a third owner with the two of them. So they're kind of my my partners, my bosses, my parents, uh, kind of all tied into one. They're not, we're not actually blood relatives, but right. um, it was just <laughs> a matter of- Honorary family. <laughs> exactly. Family. Yeah. So okay. all of us being in the right place at the right time. And that's worked out great because they- I've always run the company with a lot more guidance from them at the beginning. I was only 27 at the time. Right. Um, but now they're fully retired and they actually live in Wyoming half the year and, and they're here half the year. So Perfect. So, so it's, it's a great, great. A great agreement. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. So what about, uh, I mean, what is, uh, tell me a little bit about what, what do you do at? So um, the concession at the refuge, we do all of the uh, recreational equipment rentals. So kayaks, paddle boards, bicycles. Uh, pontoon boats, canoes. Uh, we've got some new fishing kayaks we just got a couple months ago with the pedals. Uh, and then we also do all the educational programming. So we do guided tours on all of those different things, as well as we have a, a tour boat uh, that holds 49 passengers. And then the trams that run on the wildlife drive area of the refuge, that's also my staff. Uh, we do fishing charters. We also have a great nature gift shop right down there at Tarpon Bay with lots of, lots of wonderful stuff. And we do the... Um, the greeting and fee collection when you go into the main entrance of the drive in oh, the refuge. Okay. That's, that's also your staff. that's also oh, my staff. Mm -hmm. And you, I think I'm right in saying you're the only concession right. within the refuge, aren't you? Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. They sure. do allow some other a handful of fishing captains. They get what's called a special use permit. Okay. Um, it's an annual thing that allows them to come into the waters. Like they they can't leave from the drive or they can't launch off of the docks at Tarpon Bay, but they can come in like if they pick up their guests at Punta Rasa. Gotcha. And fish in Tarpon Bay. So there's a handful of them, but other than that, we're the only ones permitted to do uh, anything commercial on the refuge. Gotcha. And you, so there's uh, there's no power boats or no, we do have power boats. You do. It's all manatee zone in Tarpon Bay and all slow speed. So our power boats that you can rent, our pontoons, have a ten horsepower motor. Okay. Because you don't need anything bigger than right. that. There's no point um, to have anything bigger, but it's wonderful for fishing and nature sightseeing. So you could opt to go out with a fishing captain on a charter or you can rent a pontoon boat and go out on your own. But most of the stuff we do is non-motorized. Perfect, yeah. I, I know I've gone in there fishing or uh, you'll just sightseeing basically from the other entrance and mm -hmm. you can only go so far um, or we only go so far. Well, you have to be very mindful of the tides and of mm -hmm. course with the draft on your boat. Yes, it's really skinny back in Yes, there, right? four feet average the whole bay and then when you get low tides, that's not even close. So. Right. Yeah. And then tell everybody a little bit about uh, the wildlife. I can only imagine when I see people pedaling out or paddling out on their kayaks, mm -hmm. and if only they knew where they were going. But uh, tell them a little bit about the uh, wildlife you can expect to see. So we see a ton of birds. Of course, we're known for birds here at the mm -hmm. refuge. Uh, the number of bird species throughout a given year that you can find here at Ding Darling is over 250. 
So that's awesome. And that includes all the regular ones, the herons, the egrets, the pelicans, and then, you know, the rare and special sightings that you might see, like the mangrove cuckoo, very elusive. Um, in addition to birds, uh, we see dolphins and manatees in the bay. Uh, the dolphins are there all year. Manatees are there most of the time. And a lot of people don't realize that. They think that they're only there in the summer. But they're really in the bay for nine months of the year. We see them every day. And then during December, January, February, we get a cold snap. They go to the power plant. As soon as it's warming back up, they come back out. So in a typical winter, they might be here for a week, gone for a week kind of gotcha, thing. Gotcha. And then occasionally we see alligators in the bay, but that's going to be more likely uh, on the tram tour on the wildlife drive. Uh, raccoons, otters are special things you might once in a while get to see. Uh, snakes, there's mangrove tree snakes out there. They're totally harmless, even though some people are not snake fans. <laughs> what, what color are they? They can vary. Yellow, orange, red, brown, black. Gotcha. gotcha. And uh, and then lots of little things, crabs, fish, uh, all kinds of, you know, little sea creatures too. Yeah, I'm sure you're in for a treat if you are paddling through mm -hmm. there. I mean, there's so it's much beautiful. wildlife, yeah. It's a special spot. Oh, and once I saw a bobcat on the kayak trail. You did? One time. Really? Mm-hmm. Up a tree? or It was just sitting on the edge of the mangroves, just licking its paws, and just sitting there as we went by. Wow. It was pretty special. How One cool. time, yes. How cool. And then um, what about, uh, tell me about the Commod Commodore Creek Trail. So that's where I meant where I saw the bobcat. So Commodore Creek is a fabulous place to, uh, to paddle. And the best way to do it your first time is to go with one of us, just mm -hmm. because you get so much out of it. We teach you about the estuary and we help you spot wildlife. And it's amazing, you know, how bright a bird might be here and really how well they camouflage. So if you go with one of us, we really teach you how to how to spot the stuff and then the way our tours are structured is you're with the naturalist for an hour and a half and yeah. then at that point we leave you in the back of the trail and you can take your time coming back you can go explore you can come straight back or you can make a whole afternoon of it yeah. but the trail's numbered so once you do it with the guide if that's enough or if you only come once a year maybe you want to do the guided every time but um the trail is posted numbers and arrows so as long as you can count to 17 you really can't get lost <laughs> and how far is that how, the how, total, how long of a paddle total distance from our shop to the trail through the loop and back is two and a half miles which takes most people about an hour and a half oh, okay. some people do it quicker and we tell them when they come back that you don't get the prize for being the fastest you win for having the most enjoyment so take your time next exactly. time because it, it's exactly. a two hour minimum that they pay for when they rent right, so right. we're always sad when people come back in an hour <laughs> and they just fly through it yeah, yeah. so um, how many visits as a year are you getting through uh, so the number in the refuge is about 850,000 wow. so wow. we interact with all of those people because remember my staff are also the yeah. greeter at the drive um, and a large portion of those people are you know doing Tarpon Bay as well as the drive so I would say it's pretty close to that to wow. that number that's, mm -hmm. that's incredible it is incredible yeah. it's one of the biggest um, concession contracts with Fish and Wildlife Service because it's different most places that have big visitation like this are national parks right and we're not so we're right. a different a different but it's entity, good to see so. that you guys are a commercial entity but mm -hmm. you're still very much on the forefront of um, the ecological uh, absolutely i mean i know that the the driveway down there is there was imported if i'm not mistaken from so it's a, a water dispersing driveway right you have electric everything like the boats and you know right so um you're pretty strong on that aren't you? we yeah. are and that's a big part of how we won the contract you know we're partners with them and if we were not that environmentally sensitive then we would not have been you know who they who they chose right, so, so right. it's very important to us and and me and all of my staff we're definitely stewards i mean our most important job there is to protect the wildlife and the environment and mm -hmm. then and then of course to provide great customer service and, and visitor experience but right. it all goes together so. yeah and if you haven't been there you definitely should there's a and i'll put some pictures on the show notes but actually you just where you pull up they've got a whole kayak section and the guys are there and girls ready to help you and it's just a really well oiled machine so you're not going to spend hours and hours prepping for it they're, they're completely geared up so that you can get out and get paddling mm -hmm. have fun um, and come back and there's a gift shop and uh, all, and we've all got about things. 60 kayaks so it's a pretty big 60 fleet. wow yeah mm -hmm. wow that's impressive and yeah. then the paddle boards we added a few years ago so that's kind of a Paddle fun, boards, so you've the got the paddle up boards, ones. and then you've got the, uh, the, the, and then you said you added the fishing kayaks. Fishing kayaks. We also still have a handful of canoes, and those are for 
the people who just have been canoeing all their lives and they insist and they want to canoe. So we have 60 kayaks and four canoes. Gotcha. And that's just, like I said, really the old school. But mostly we recommend kayaks. They're much more stable, mm -hmm. easier to maneuver. Than so a would it, if you were a guest and you wanted to get one of those fishing kayaks, would they, you need a fishing license? Right. Yes. Yeah. If you're fishing, well, if you're fishing anywhere, you need to have a license. A lot right. of people don't realize that if they're fishing on the beach, they need to have a license unless they're a Florida resident. Um, but if you're fishing on a vessel, which a kayak is considered a vessel, mm -hmm. then you do need a fishing license. So, gotcha. so we sell them, and we also tell people, you know, you can do it right on the app now. It's pretty easy to get the gotcha. get the licenses. But, but you yes. can help them do that mm -hmm. when they yep. get there. Yeah, get them all set up. Okay, and this is part of the. Uh, is it part of the Blue Water? Canoe we are way? part of the Calusa Blue Way. Calusa Blue Way, yeah. That's yeah. It, yeah. So the Blue Way is fantastic. It's a whole county mapped out trails there's three sections so there's the um south section down towards lover's key and, and fort myers beach the estero bay yeah and then there's the caloosahatchee river section and then there's our section which is matlache and pine island and sanibel so yes we are one of the noted um stops on right. the Calusa and Blue just way. to be clear it's actually a, a, a canoe kayak way that's how how long is it it's oh um, uh, you know i don't know the total I, distance. I think it's a couple of hundred miles i mm -hmm. believe and um we should uh, I'll look into see how see how far it is and yeah so that's a great path that the county um, put in they set aside uh, a fund on the beaches and shoreline budget and they did this back I just remember it was 2002 and three because they had just finished putting all the signs in when Hurricane Charlie came through mm -hmm. they had to go put a few of them back because um, gotcha, they got gotcha. removed so that's the timeline and th this was the first county in the country to do that to spend money on a paddling trail and so now if you have gps you yeah. can download all the coordinates and like you could always paddle commodore creek right it's numbered and point right, arrows right. but now you can paddle all kinds of mangrove trails through the county that you wouldn't have been able to do um, so if somebody safely. if somebody turned up to can they put their paddle board into the into the so not right now no okay. uh so we are currently sharing our parking lot with a big construction project yes. and uh it's a new marine lab for the sanibel captiva conservation foundation mm -hmm. so once it's done that's awesome i mean they do a lot of great research but in the meantime the construction uh site is larger than it's large enough that it is occupying a large amount of the parking that we need for our guests gotcha. and so because of that uh, the federal government has closed the public launch until that is completed unfortunately the project is taking a lot longer than it yeah. was supposed to so the public launch has been closed since November of 2016 gotcha. and they're still working on the building but so you, you intend to open that oh up yes again? as soon as we have enough parking to accommodate all of the people doing our tours as well as people launching their own equipment then we'll go back to what it was before which is it's seven dollars to launch it's like a launch parking fee right. um a kayak or a paddleboard yeah. and 15 for anything with a motor so oh. you can launch a motorboat oh, wow. there you too can. but but it has to be pretty small like a flats boat because right. otherwise right. it's not appropriate for the depth right it's and really then it's all that. slow speed and yeah. yeah gotcha gotcha mm -hmm. gotcha and something uh most people wouldn't know about um although you are a concession and you're you're a going concern a portion of your proceeds mm -hmm. do get donated to yes 15 percent of every dollar we take in goes to fish and wildlife that's service. awesome yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so you raise a lot of money every year for that we do yeah fantastic and uh so just to give us a bit of um any uh if you if you weren't at uh tarpon bay explorers for the day and you were looking for something to do what would be your f three favorite things to do on sanibel so i love biking on the island that's one of the my favorite things about living here in fact the only time you'll find me in my car is if i'm leaving the island really? so i bike to work every day i biked here for this i bike everywhere um so definitely biking and whenever i have guests we do a lot of biking through the refuge but also through you know all the other places like how many people don't find out there's a cemetery on sanibel because right. you can't see it unless yeah, so you're you go, on go the past. bike or the walking path yep. and so that's one of the fun things to point out to people mm -hmm. um, that you would never see if you weren't biking so that de definitely biking would be one um the beaches. And that's down on Middle Gulf Drive, I believe. Right. It cuts back through. And I, yeah. Yeah, I had a hell of a surprise one when I first moved there and did exactly <laughs> the same thing. And yeah, I just went by it now because I took the detour that way just because it's a prettier path than staying along yeah. the road the whole yeah. time. So. Perfect. Okay, so that's one. That's yeah, one. Definitely. Then big the one, beaches. Big one, big one. Yeah. And beaches are a big one. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm not really a sheller, but pretty much everybody who comes here at least 
takes a you know a try at it or some fun and yeah. wants to bring some shells home i always tell my guests you know all things in moderation yeah for sure because <laughs> you don't really need all that weight to take home <laughs> and really what are you going to do with it you know, like pile them you know in a bowl on your shelf so exactly um but just being out at the beach just enjoyable love to go sit out there and and read or go for walks um, yeah and then uh other than that outside stuff I have, when I've had guests, we'll go do the segue with Billy. That's really fun. Yeah, I've never done that. It's yeah. really fun. Is it? And it's not something I do unless I have guests. But so that's- Billy's, uh, if you had, didn't, hadn't heard about Billy's Bike Rentals here on Periwinkle, he has a couple of different stores, but he actually has a, a segue. They have to be accompanied mm-hmm. tours, and, and right. Billy's Bike Rentals do accompanied tours. And you'll see four, five, six, seven segues going down. Yeah, I've never done it. I'd like to do it. It's it's fun. It looks like fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's really Perfect. easy. I mean, people think you that you have to have a lot of balance, but you know, it's really one of those things that it doesn't take long to pick up and and feel gotcha. confident. On gotcha. It. Hey, one thing I was going to ask you is when you're in the refuge. I know um, I've been in there, and sometimes you go through there, and there's just an abundance of wildlife everywhere you look there's different things there's hawks there's birds mm-hmm. there's, you know and then another time you can go down there and it, and it can be relatively quiet um what what would you suggest what would your best tips to be when's the best time to be there is it tired or is it yeah so it varies in where you are in the mm-hmm. refuge so if you're doing the wildlife drive the four mile road the best time for that is always low tide right. because what you're observing there is you're up on the road and you're observing the flats with the birds feeding mm-hmm. so when the flats are more exposed you're going to see more then come over to tarpon bay and that's a different story because if it's too low of a tide you can't get into Commodore Creek. There's not always water in gotcha. there. And so low tide can be good and the birding can be good in the bay when the flats are exposed. But if you're wanting to do the trail, you need to have at least a, a medium low or higher. It can't be a negative low. Gotcha. So in other words, all the low tides do not prohibit us from getting in the trail, but negative low tides do. Gotcha. And then when you're going out into Tarpon Bay, so to the rookeries, which is where the birds nest there, and really it's the only visible rookery. The refuge, the public access areas, that's the only rookery. There are tons of other rookeries that are in areas because the refuge is actually a complex of five refuges and a lot of it is not accessible. Mm -hmm. But the only rookeries you can see are the ones out in the middle of Tarpon Bay. There's five islands. And those, the best activity time is at night. Oh, when they so come the to roost. So evening tour, because yeah. they come to roost. So it doesn't matter what time of year, because mm. if they're nesting, they're there all day. So like right now, if you go out there in the middle of the day, there are brown pelicans, great egrets, and great blue herons, because they all have nests. Right. But then if you come in the evening, there's also little blue herons, and night herons, and reddish egrets, and all the birds that aren't nesting yet, because it's not their season. Gotcha. So Good to know. Varies to know. where you're going. Good to know. And then um, we offer, we actually saw on your website that you offer a free gift if yes, you ride, if your, you ride bike. your bike. I mean, that's pretty cool. So, so what is it, just to encourage people to cut, mm-hmm. get their legs spinning? And- well, trying to encourage people to, yeah, be more environmental. And it's the best way to get around the island mm-hmm. anyway with traffic this yeah, time of year, but all the time sure. anyway. Yeah. So actually what it is is a, it's a water bottle. Okay. Well, and it cool. says it has a picture of a bike on it, and it says Tarpon Bay, and it's a reusable water bottle. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. Any funny stories you can share? Anything? Any experiences you've had on uh, at the uh, at the refuge? Funny there? stories. Oh, yeah. Um, so we were talking about. I mentioned uh, snakes, and sometimes people can be a little afraid of those. Mm-hmm. There's crabs that mm-hmm. are on the trees, and they're about the size of a quarter, and mm-hmm. they're just little mangrove tree crabs. But occasionally, usually a lady might see one and then notice that there's more and more of them and occasionally they'll fall in a boat in a (laughs) kayak so i had a a a young lady couldn't have been older than her early 20s a couple months ago and she's a little ahead of me because you know you kind of go single file in certain sections through the trail and i hear the loudest scream i've ever heard back there i'm thinking oh she had to have fallen out of the boat or something no there was a crab so by the time i catch up to him she's kind of halfway standing trying to avoid this little and I had to get the crab out of the boat. So <laughs> that was, uh, that was. I think their pincers are about this big. Exactly. I, I, I they don't think you can algae. invite them yeah. to pince anything. No. Like no. Oh, that's funny. And that actually, funny. Uh, along the same lines, uh, mullet. Mullet are mm-hmm. our fish that yeah, jump, jump all the time. Yeah. So I actually tell people this on my tours. I've been doing this for 17 years, and I've mm-hmm. seen a mullet land in a kayak three times. Right. So you have like a one in six year chance that it's going to happen. Happened to you. <laughs> and the first time was the day I was training, actually up in Sarasota, in my trainer's boat. Like of all the chances, oh, really? a mullet landed in his kayak. The second time was this little girl. She couldn't have been more than four or five. It was in the back of the Commodore Creek, which we call Mullet Bay or Mullet Lake. She was so calm. It landed right in front of her, and she just picked the fish up 
and put it back in the water. I was so impressed. And then about a month <laughs> later, a couple um, my age or a little older, and we're almost back to the uh, kayak you know, ramp, almost back to the shop. And a mullet lands in their boat, and they scream bloody murder, and I had to go take the fish out of the boat. So it was funny, because right after the five-year-old having the complete calm fish whisperer attitude. Yeah, so, that was funny. That so was those funny. are some funnies. Oh, I had a couple of girlfriends down and took them out paddleboarding once last year, the year before. And we came upon some sleeping manatees. So obviously, mm-hmm. if you see them, you don't go right by them. But if you don't know they're there, and my friend Tracy, it was her first time paddleboarding, she managed to like go right between them and they woke up and so it was the biggest wave and i was so impressed she didn't fall off she just <laughs> she actually didn't solid. fall off she was <laughs> terrified but didn't fall off and of course you know they're gentle giants it wouldn't have been a big deal right, if, right. if she had but uh yeah that was oh, a, a funny awesome. one too that's awesome okay i know you've got a uh another life outside Mm-hmm. of Tarpon Bay Explorers. Tell us a little bit about that. So my husband and I opened a restaurant because we're crazy. And, you know, everyone who opens restaurants is crazy. Um, so that was now, when did we open? January of 2011. So, yeah, it's been seven years. Mm-hmm. And my husband's been in the restaurant business for his whole life. So this is really his thing. Um, but that doesn't mean that when we first opened it, I wasn't there all the time, too. Right. So two full-time jobs. I would run right from Tarpon Bay over to the restaurant. And then after the second season of doing that, I said, okay, honey, you're on your own. So my role at the restaurant now is to you know get involved in major decisions, right. have meetings with the managers quarterly, and tell them what I want done. But other than that, I really stay out of it. So George, 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 runs George the and restaurant. Wendy's is the name of the restaurant. It's a must-go-to. It's at the uh, corner of uh, Periwinkle and Tarpon Bay. Uh, beautifully landscaped it's got all greenery around the front and uh, it's a place I stop to quite often if I'm in between appointments Uh, definitely recommend it really really cool place lots of artwork uh, on the walls nice open airy and uh, cool neighborhood bar there as well Um, it's a big restaurant and we are open lunch and dinner every day Uh, we have live entertainment every night which is unique on Sanibel uh, especially now that Jack Randa's closed. There were two places. Now we're the only ones. But So every night. Yeah. Every night, except during football season, we don't have live entertainment on Sunday and Monday night because we also have big um, big football. We have all the games on, but I'm from Chicago. George is from Buffalo. So we have fan clubs for those two teams. So the Bears are always on the middle TV with volume, no matter how bad they're playing. And then all the other games can be found on, on different TVs too. And we do free jello shots every time they score a touchdown, which hasn't cost me much money because... <laughs> <laughs> they haven't been very good for a long time, but still fun. Still num- a lot of num- fun. Number one most popular thing on the menu? Uh, probably the most popular share plate would be the tuna nachos, okay. which are awesome, wontons and the seared tuna and seaweed salad. Uh, chicken wings, my husband again from Buffalo, so our wings are quite tasty. Yes. And then the entrees, probably either our drunken grouper or our grouper franchise. We've also got great sandwiches, grouper Reuben, yeah. wonderful salads. Um, yeah, salads and, are very good. Yeah. yeah so mostly yeah. what I try to stick with. Janice makes a mean pasta dish, but I try to try stick to, to the salad. That's our <laughs> chef, Janice. She's, she's awesome. Awesome. Well, um, just uh, a couple of finishing things. Uh, how can we find out about more about Tarpon Bay Explorers? What's the web? Website. What's the web address? So it's tarpanbayexplorers.com. And then we also have uh, Facebook, and there's posts on there every day. Um, and then Twitter, and what are the other ones? Uh, Instagram. You Instagram. Instagram. Well, I can, and my I'll, younger staff handle these things, so I can't. Okay, no, we'll, I'll get them after, and we'll put okay. them in the show notes yeah, we're underneath. On all, all pretty the much any social, social media, media. Mm-hmm. and then how about uh, george and wendy's the so restaurant so george and wendy's has a great web address it's sanibel seafood grill.com sanibel seafood grill.com mm-hmm. fantastic and a big facebook um following on there too which is a great way to find out you know what music's coming up and, and specials and, and all of that kind of stuff so you've been on the island for how long just over 15 years 15 years so you're practically a local i am i think oh. so and George and I actually moved here within a month of each other. Did you really? Independently. And meant when did to be. You meet? Uh, we met early on being here, just like with chamber stuff. And because right. I was on the board for a long time. And, you know, I was a customer at Schnoppers. And actually, Me how too. we really met, met was <laughs> we, um, we do underprivileged kids fishing events twice a year and we needed somebody to do the food and so we contacted schnappers and this was really shortly after we opened so in 2003 and at the time it was carmen 
who was there because Carmen was just transitioning out and George was in because he had just moved here too. Right. And uh, so Carmen came and did the hot dogs the first time and then the next time it was George. And so I really met him doing that event and then I got a crush on the hot dog guy. So, oh. And now we've been married for 10 years. So. <laughs> yeah, that's how I met George from, uh, that was my, uh, I'm trying to be, I normally try and good during the day, but I couldn't resist the Snapper's Burger every now and again. Yes. And that's how I met, but. Okay, so as you're a, lo a practical local, <laughs> we've got to try and... Uh-oh, uh is this a test? Yeah, this is a <laughs> test. Have you ever blown one of these before? No. Give it your best shot. I'm going to do it with you. I'm not very good myself. I don't want to so right on here. Have you ever done it? What so, is it? So it's a conch shell. And, Queen conch. Uh, what is it? Queen conch. Queen conch. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Put your hand in there. You're going to get it over the end and give it a go. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to get, give, give you. So you go, it's sort of more like you get past your lips and You sound like an elephant. I know. Then, well, I'm yeah. not a true local, am I? I've only been here 19 years. You've been here how long? No, 15. 15. Okay, so all right, we give up What was that, that supposed then? to sound like? Well, actually, if this is for a true local, we don't have Queen Conk here. Oh, we don't? <laughs> No. Oh, okay. They're All further right. south. That's right. <laughs> They're not. That's right here. Look, minor, like minor detail, but you could get like a horse conch and then it would be more authentic. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, that's awesome. Thanks very much, Wendy. Thank you. Thanks for stopping it's a by. Pleasure. And uh, appreciate it. And hopefully uh, we'll get some people down at Tub and Bay Explorers and definitely check out George and Wendy's. Yes. And uh, one of my favorite restaurants. So, so come see us much. and we're open 364 days a year, both businesses. We're closed on Christmas Day. Give me the telephone numbers of both businesses. Uh, Tarpon Bay is 239-472-8900. And George and Wendy's Seafood Grill is 239-395-1263. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Perfect. Good stuff.